Welcome to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Joyous conversations about what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about our one reality. You have nothing to fear. You are eternal and you are perfectly loved. Knowing the truth changes everything. Now, here's Roberta. Welcome to Seek Reality. I'm Roberta Grimes and I'm so happy you're with us today. This week we celebrate a joyous Seek Reality tradition that goes back now for many years, actually. Lots of people know about the spiritualist movement, which began with the Fox Sisters as a 19th century spiritual movement in the U.S., and it soon spread to Great Britain, France, and it's actually been in many, a lot of places now. But spiritism is something a little different. Spiritism also began in the 19th century, but it's based... It, this 19th century teachings of Alan Kardec, and while it's now robustly based in Brazil, it also is a fairly rapidly growing spiritual movement in the U.S., and the U.S. Spiritual, Spiritist Federation is holding its 17th symposium on September 30th at Portland State University. And it's a little tradition here at Seek Reality for us to help them get the word out every year. This year, the U.S. Spiritist Federation has sent us Peter Hayes to tell us more about it and a little bit more about spiritism, too. Peter Hayes works at the Spiritist Group Love and Light in Newark, New Jersey. He's also the current outreach director of the United States Spiritist Federation, and he's an active participant in the Tri-State Spiritist Federation as well. Peter has published children's books with his wife, who's Betty Rosen, through their company's semi Fronteras Press, and with other publishers in Brazil, Colombia, and the U.S. He's got an extensive background in theater. Boy, do I envy that. And he holds a Master's of Fine Arts in Dramatic Writing from New York University. He currently also works in commercial real estate. Peter, I'm so happy you're with us at Sunseek Reality today. It's great to have you here. Welcome. Thank you, Roberta. It's a pleasure to be here. Are you from Brazil? Are you American? No, you... no. I was born in Berkeley, California. Oh, a plain and, old uh, American. See, this is becoming yeah. a more and more, I think, an mm-hmm. American, American movement as well, which is to me kind it of is. exciting because when we started doing this, everyone we talked with was from Brazil. From Brazil, yes. There are more and more Americans who are taking interest in this. I got involved in spiritism like many Americans uh, because my wife is from Brazil. So I had a significant other who was Brazilian and it was through her that I got introduced to spiritism, which was, oh gosh, well over 25 years ago now. Um, But um, my wife is Jewish and we're an interfaith couple. I have a Christian background, but uh, she uh, was interested in spiritism too, because in In Brazil, there tends to be uh, a tradition of people taking interest in different religious uh, directions. So if one's Catholic, one might be interested in also Eastern religions and things like that. And so uh, through her, originally, I started learning about Spiritism. And the Spiritist group or the Spiritist Center I belong to, Spiritist Group Love and Light, is the one that I started with. And so I'm here many years later still at that center. And uh, before that, I I didn't have a, a strong Christian background per se, although many in my family were religious. But um, I was always interested in, in the Bible. And I remember taking a class uh, in college on the New Testament. And that when I, I started reading the words of Jesus, I really became very interested in all of that. It was not the perception that I had of Christianity at all. and uh, But I was also very interested in reincarnation even before I met my wife. It's just uh, something that about it felt very truthful to me. And then the more I learned about spiritism, the more I gradually became very, very interested in it. And now I'm not only uh, an active worker, I'm actually the president of the center right now. And, um, uh, but I got involved as a, as a presenter and so I've spoken on a few topics on spiritism as well, and have been in several spiritist symposiums in the past. So, so, so tell us a little more about spiritism. So, I, 
when I remember when I first got involved in kind of helping um, the spiritist movement, I I did study it and I read about I read some of what Alan Kardec had written and I thought, wow, this is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I can see why people are attracted to it. So sure. tell us a little more about it. Well, spiritism is a holistic approach to life that is a mix of uh, philosophy, religion, and science. It takes all three very seriously. And it deals with the nature of spirits and their relationship between the physical world and the non-physical world. Spiritism believes in reincarnation. It believes, it, it focuses on why we are here, what is our purpose in being here, and that we're all on a path to progressing spiritually. I would say to be a spiritist, you kind of need two basic things. You need to first believe that there is a God, or at least some kind of power, power. I understand not everybody's comfortable with the word God, but certainly believes in a in a uh, an all uh, encompassing force. So spiritism believes that God is the first cause of all things. God is certainly um, uh, all good. That God is is all encompassing, and there are both physical laws as well as uh, non-physical laws, divine laws that govern the nature of our existence. The other thing I think you need to be a spiritist is believe that we do have a soul, a spirit that is immortal and that it will continue beyond the body. So the exact opposite of spiritism is if you're, say, a materialist who believes that the soul, uh, the sum total of our existence is based upon the workings of our brain and that's it. So spiritism has the opposite approach. And so spiritism tries to really focus on what it means to lead our lives as ethically as we can. So we follow the teachings of Jesus, the morality is laid out in Jesus. The Sermon on the Mount's a good example of that, for instance. And in doing so, it's about making spiritual progress, that every life we lead is an opportunity to learn and to grow. And because spiritism stresses cause and effect, it's one example of how spiritism is kind of a blend of Christianity, but it's also got elements of Hinduism and Buddhism is in it as well. Yeah, when I it talks that. about cause and effect and that everything we do has some kind of consequence, but it's not a one size fits all. Everyone's journey is unique. And so the consequences of our actions, whatever they may be, can vary a great deal. But um, so spiritism is a very optimistic approach to life in which uh, we do believe that because we continue, it, it really makes a huge difference as to how we view things. Everything we go through, no matter how difficult it is, is just for the moment. And it's not the permanent state of things. Also, I think is important is that when spiritism talks about material things, it's not that the material is bad. Money, for instance, is not bad. It's simply a tool. Our relationship with the physical world uh, is an opportunity to learn. So everything that we experience through the material life is an opportunity to learn. The journeys we have in our bodies are opportunities to learn, but that stuff is not permanent. So when we become overly attached to it, something Buddhism stresses, by the way, but when we become overly attached to the physical, then that can, can lead to sources of unhappiness. Yeah, I mean, I remember it made a great deal of sense, mm -hmm. but but there's not so much communicating with the dead then. then well, there, there is. What it, the way it's done, though, is the, you mentioned Alan Kardec, who was a French educator in France. And in the 1850s, he put together what's called the Spiritist Codification, right. which are five books, the Spirit's Book, 1857, followed by the Medium's Book, 1861, then the Gospel According to Spiritism, which is 1863. Yeah, and this then, is the quiz, uh, by the way. <laughs> yeah, this is the quiz. And then uh, Heaven and Hell was 1865, I believe. And then uh, the last book, Genesis, is 1868. So in about a 10, 12-year period of time, the what we call the Spiritist Codification was put together. Uh -huh. 
Alan Kardec did this with a team of, of higher level spirits. So the information was all obtained through mediumship. Right. And um, a lot of the source and the information we have certainly comes from the other side. Kardec makes his comments, but he was in tune to the higher level spirits. And so when we talk about spiritist books in general, a lot of it comes through mediumship. I'll, I'll get to how mediumship is practiced in the spiritist center in a moment, if you like. Sure. But um, just to continue along with, with an overview of spiritism, after Alan Kardec, there were other uh, contributors to the books that we now have, especially books in English, on spiritism. Leon Denis, for instance, was a very respected uh, interpreter of spiritism from France. He was a little later than Kardec. 1890s, early 20th century. And then uh, I know uh, in the past when uh, Jasada Korngold and Dan Assisi and Tanya Schwartz were here on your program, they talked about Brazil. And so what happened with spiritism is that it started taking root in Brazil, I believe it was in the 1880s, and it continued up to, to this day, and it flourished in Brazil. And there were a number of important works on spiritism that are now available in English. The medium Chico Xavier, who was considered one of the greatest mediums of the 20th century, psychographed around 490 books uh, in his lifetime over 60 plus period of, of doing so. And there's, there's two general spiritist authors whose works are very considered very important, starting in the late 18, sorry, starting in the, in the 1930s, going up to about the 1960s or so. Uh, the first was Andre Luiz, the spirit Andre Luiz, who was a medical doctor in Brazil. And he, uh, Chico Xavier, psychographed, or through automatic writing, produced about 15 books from Andre Luiz that are about life in the spirit world. So it gives rather vivid accounts of what can happen when we cross over into the spirit world. And it, in some ways, the Andre Louise books take the content of the spiritist codification from Alan Kardec, which is a little more abstract at times, and it gives specific concrete examples. And then another spirit that Chico Xavier, the medium Chico Xavier had a collaboration with, was a spirit named Emmanuel, who was um, really uh, the the mentor of Chico Xavier. And many books were produced from Emmanuel. There were a series of novels that focus on the different incarnations that Emmanuel had, starting in Rome when he was a, a Roman senator, going up through the 19th, or uh, I believe it's the 19th century. And what happened is that um, all of that illustrates examples of what can happen through the journey of one spirit as it goes through different incarnations. But also, Emmanuel produced several books that are more inspirational teachings that are interpretations of phrases from the New Testament, phrases from Jesus, phrases from Paul and his letters and so forth in their meditations. And those are very short, inspirational teachings. So those are two, there's many other books by Chico Xavier that he psychographed, but those are two of the major works in English that p people can read. And um, another important medium, just to get us up to the present, would be uh, Gibaldo Franco, who was uh, born 1927. So if I'm doing the math right, I think he's 96 right now. And Gibaldo Franco started psychographing works in Brazil in um, the early 1950s. And he's produced around 290 books. And there's a number of spirits that he's worked with. And one of them is um, Joanna de Angelis, who was a spirit who was a nun. If you look her up, she's a historic figure. And Joanna de Angelis uh, produced several works that focus on psychology. And these works have been produced over the last oh, 35, almost 40 years now. And more recently, um, about uh, 
a little over a year ago, I think was the last one. And actually the U.S. Spiritist Symposium that we're doing on September 30th in Portland, Oregon, is in part inspired by the works of Joanna de Angelis because the symposium takes a focus on um, psychology and our relationship to to uh, finding a mental balance and 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 mental health because the um, the symposium is is a spiritual path to mental health and if you look at the works of Joanna de Angelis, she's Stress is Jungian psychology, but also transpersonal psychology as well, which are transpersonal psychology is more recent, recent meaning the last 50 years or so approach to, to psychology. And um, so spiritism has works up to the present is, is the general point. Um, if I may continue a little bit more on the history part. I uh, think this is fascinating. And, and okay. it's your movement looks a lot more modern, up-to-date, sophisticated mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than what most people think of as okay. a spiritual right. movement, because most of them are like flies in amber. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. they're like a hundred years ago, people thought this, mm -hmm. and now mm -hmm. we still do the same thing. Or, right. or, right. or a thousand years ago, people thought this, we're still doing the same thing. Right. Whereas yours is really quite a modern, mm -hmm. up-to-the-minute way of thinking which is yeah is uh, very spiritual. fresh yes and that that fascinated mm -hmm. me i remember when we first started working with the spiritists right. that we don't mm -hmm. stop learning which is to me very very important absolutely i mean the spiritist symposium is focusing this year on psychology it's different themes every year yeah. but you know, it, it spiritism strongly advocates psychology and um uh, there's there's an important uh, creed, if you will, in spiritism. I think Dan Nassisi may have mentioned this in his program with you, which is we follow science in that if science proves that anything we think is positively not correct, then we must follow science. So spiritism, when it talks about not accepting the dogma of religion, that has more to do with as you just said, having these entrenched beliefs that, you know, this is what we thought hundreds of years ago and, and we're not going to change now, no matter yeah. what scientists tell us and that kind of thing. Spiritism does not, not embrace that at all. Um, you know, we certainly understand yeah. that not everyone believes in the afterlife and that's fine. But, uh, but certainly there's a lot of elements to science that spiritism is very interested in and certainly um, does talk about in our, in modern presentations. No, I, I, I think that that's part of what engaged me when I first started studying what you all believe. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, so much about beliefs. It's about what you've been able to learn about right. what's true. Right. I mean, when, when I've studied the afterlife, um, there's so much about it that's real. I, I mm -hmm. don't think it's possible to be a naysayer anymore. So mm -hmm. I'm not worried that you're going to disprove that. But right. but there's so much that people have believed in the past mm -hmm. and uh, in re religious or spiritual terms, which just isn't true. For example, hell is a very good example. There just is no right. hell. I know there's no hell. So right. um, uh, the fact that you're all still trying to understand what's true and to, to better understand what's true and to come up with better ways of looking at what's true, which is why mm -hmm. I was very interested in, mm -hmm. in your, in your, your, um, your theme for this year in, in, in the mm -hmm. spiritual path to mental balance. Right. Well, that's up to the minute. It seems to me yes, they it is. Needed yeah. mental balance. It's modern people. For right. heaven's sake. I mean, I mean that's yeah. That's big. It 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 focuses on a few things. Part of it is based on the premise that if we're only looking for external ways to find happiness and stability within ourselves, then we're going to suffer very likely. Maybe not in the short run. In other words, like a simple example would be if, if I assumed 
that my title in life, what I do for a living is going to make me happy and that's going to impress everybody. Well, it might for a little while, but it doesn't really cause a deeper sense of spiritual fulfillment. True. And so um, that's part of it. Another part of it is that anything we're struggling with emotionally today, psychologically, has a lot to do with the prior history of our spiritual journey. What have we done in the past? What have we not done in the past? What are we here to work on within ourselves? And so when we talk about who we are, it's a combination of our experiences in this life and all the things that psychology tells us about um, the, the kind of childhood we have and whether we're repressing memories or not repressing memories. But then there's also the prior incarnations and the effects of that on us as well. By the way, Spiritism doesn't necessarily believe we need to go back and remember everything we've done in prior incarnations. Part of the argument for that is that sometimes it's just too much. If we knew everything that we did, it might be really hard to live with that. Just so, start dwelling in the past, which is not yes. productive for now. It, That's it, right. Exactly. It misses the point. So, so is, is, what, how does it fit together? I mean, is there a, a, a spiritual component to our mental issues now? I mean, how does it, have you researched that? How it, how well, it works? Yeah. We are, the way spiritists talk about it is that the spiritual component is based on the spirit being immortal and that we are a product of everything that we've, we've gone through right. up to this point. So there's that. Yes. Uh, but also we're very much connected in a part of our bodies, of course. And so there is a physiological component to it as well. You know, uh, mental health, for instance, is understood as often a chemical imbalance of one kind or another. True. And that's true, you know, um, what spiritism adds to it, not just spiritism, I think, but certainly spiritism stresses is that if there's a spiritual component to it, if we're, say, suffering from some severe mental health issue now, that might be a result of something that we've done in the past. The spirit itself is not mentally ill in perpetuity. That's an important point. In other words, we would go through a current lifetime in which we're experiencing mental health issues, depression, anxiety, fear, addictions of one kind or another. It may not be the first time we've gone through that, but it's something that the spirit has to try to work through. And another thing that Joanna De Angelis in her books on psychology, which are one of the major inspirations of the spirit, U.S. Spiritist Symposium for this year, Joanna De Angelis stresses the importance of consciousness, which, of course, is what psychologists tell us, right? That we, mm -hmm. we need to have consciousness. We cannot really connect to our higher selves if we don't connect to our lower selves or have enough awareness of it so that it doesn't push us around. And that it's very important that we, when we talk about trying to integrate with our deeper selves, that means who are we? Do we know who we really are? And that's you know an ongoing process, but it's so important that we begin to really tap into our our well our lower selves enough to, so that we can then begin to let that go a little bit more. And that process takes a while. I mean, it's different for everyone, right? Some people might let go of certain qualities that they are better off without. Um, Maybe they can do it quickly. Others, it may take more than one lifetime. It could certainly take yeah. a full lifetime. Yeah. So what's the role of, do you, do spiritists believe that we have spirit guides? Do they, do we mm -hmm. work with our spirit guides? Is that a part of? Yes. Yes. Um, Spiritists believe that we have what they often call the mentors. There's different names for them. Sometimes people, we don't use the word angel very much, but certainly it's, it's the same idea. 
that we have a spirit that's a little more evolved than we are, not necessarily a spirit that's much more evolved, but further along than we are. And that spirit takes an active interest in, in what we're doing and, and can help us. Um, the relationship we have with spirits in general can be kind of a complex one because we are open to often getting suggestions from spirits. The spirits book makes the point. There's a question. I want to say it's question four five nine in the spirits book, but I may be wrong. But uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't memorized all of the right. literature, <laughs> somebody will, will tell me if I'm wrong. But anyway, the question is, <laughs> do spirits influence our thoughts and our actions? And the answer is more than you might think. Oh, yes. And, That's yeah, for right. sure. So it's that idea. And um, but it's depending upon what kind of thoughts we have to begin with. We can attract spirits that may be trying to help us, or if we're very negative in our thoughts, we may be attracting spirits that would love to in, encourage us into wrongdoing of one kind or another. So, but it's up to us to take the responsibility to uh, have enough awareness and consciousness of what our regular thoughts are, that we're trying to attune ourselves more to the good rather than say to the negative. Um, actually something I wanted to mention, you'd mentioned before about hell, you know, there's not a, a hell. Um, the fourth book in the codification, the book heaven and hell, what it says is it's, it agrees. It, it rejects the idea that there's a permanent hell from which you can never, ever, ever get out of what it does say and what spiritism tends to say is in the spirit world, what we call hell is a reflection of our own thoughts. So if you think about it here, people who are very negative and are constantly seeing how messed up everything is, they're kind of putting themselves through hell, right? I'm sure you've had the experience of you got somebody who's always got a problem and you try to help them or make suggestions and they yeah. can always tell you why it won't work, right? And you're so people are just... Mental prison, really, yes. Yes. So that's the idea. What we call hell is the prison that we create for ourselves. Oh, yes. And so as a general point, what we experience in the spirit world is a reflection of our current emotional state, which mm -hmm. is subject to change. So the right. more we work on ourselves, the more we start to have consciousness, the more we start to improve, then the environment in the spirit world also changes. And so, again... Hell, I say in quotes, is is a temporary state of things. Interestingly, in, in the book Heaven and Hell, there is testimony from, I think, well over 60 different spirits about what their experiences are. Some are happy. Some are not happy. Some are called suffering spirits, which means they're kind of confused and don't quite know what's going on. Others are further along. There are spirits of criminals, there are spirits that committed suicide, and they all had different experiences for now. I mean, this it's a snapshot of where they were at the time that that occurred. But again, what's optimistic about spiritism, uh, and it's not just spiritism that says this, is that we, um, we are able to change, we are able to evolve, and our reality will reflect that as we go forward. Yeah, I think that's a different way of expressing pretty much what I've come to understand, too, from okay. my research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not permanent. And it's not, right. we put ourselves there. It's yes, not, we do. Yeah. It's, God doesn't put us there. Um, right. we, it would be great if we could say God did, because then we wouldn't be responsible for it. We would love to be able to offload that responsibility, yeah. but it's all our own. Well, one way Spiritism, I think, understands the workings of God is when we talk about divine law, it's, it's kind of like this. What we experience in the spirit world is a reflection of our thoughts. Thought is very powerful. It's almost the engine, if you will, in yeah. the spirit world. So God has created these parameters, and we're operating within the parameters. Yes, we have free will. Up to a point, we have free will. Mm -hmm. But there are boundaries, so we can't do whatever we feel like. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that Spiritism talks about is the more we evolve spiritually, 
the vibration of the spirit changes. So the, the higher your vibration is at will, the, the more you, you go to a place within the spirit world that's more pleasant. When your vibration's on the lower side as a reflection of thoughts, then um, you might be in, they sometimes, they call it the lower zones um, in spiritism, which would mean spirits that are more on the suffering side. Mm-hmm. And how long they stay there really depends in part on them. Sometimes they do get help, but they have to be ready to want help. And that's right. key. Right, that's very important very for important. to understand. Right. Yes. Right. So spiritism strongly, strongly emphasizes, emphasizes that responsibility matters. Personal responsibility matters. Yeah, of course we need help sometimes. Sometimes we're stuck, but we have to want help. And if we don't want help, it's like a simple example, you know, someone who's an alcoholic. Alcoholics can recover and put their lives in a much more positive path, but they have to want to do it. And of course, there's help if they want it. But sometimes what happens with alcoholics is they're in denial. Oh, yeah, I could stop. I could stop tomorrow. I don't oh, know. Yes. Whatsoever. But I they don't do like that right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. and uh you know again all of us have to make choices as to whether or not we want to try to make our lives better or stay where we are another thing spiritism stresses by the way and this is in the spirits book the first book of the spiritist codification which asks well over a thousand questions it's more than a thousand nineteen questions about the nature of our existence and there's a section uh, of, of divine laws that come from God, and one of them is the law of progress. And the law of progress says we will advance. How quickly we advance depends on us. So, yes, we might make good strides in one lifetime, or we may kind of coast along and just sort of hang out and not really uh, do too much for now. But eventually, something will give us that little shove, and we will We'll, we will move along. We can't stay in limbo forever, so to speak. Many people um, who email me want to advance. <laughs> and mm-hmm. they even say, they're, they're prompting me to say, ask them how. How, how can I advance? What would you say <laughs> to people who ask you that question? If I really want to advance, how do I do that? Well, uh, that's a tough question, but it's a good one. Um I think certainly important is if you think about the core of Christianity and Jesus's teachings, it's forgiveness. So whether we have to forgive others or forgive ourselves, both, certainly, that's an important part of it. Um, And patience is certainly key because sometimes when people want to change, that's wonderful. But if they're hoping to change everything by next week, well, Mm -hmm. it doesn't happen that way. You know, we... We learn better usually, usually we learn better when we learn slowly through trial and error. And if we can learn to forgive ourselves when we make mistakes, and this is one thing Spiritism stresses, again, the teachings of Jesus is the importance of compassion, compassion for ourselves and certainly compassion for one another. And the way in which any important relationship we're in, whether it's a friendship or a romantic relationship, you know, the more we can learn to accept one another for who we are, rather than I'm going to change that person, you know, which usually doesn't work, uh, to put it mildly. Uh, but the only, but you can do it mm-hmm. by yourself projecting the mm-hmm. kind of person you hope them that they will become. Right. If you're, if you're a shining example of what you hope that they can want to become, mm-hmm. then little by little, they may want to become that kind of person too. But your answer was so perfect. Mm-hmm. Forgiveness. That's what mm-hmm. Jesus said. Right. And how many right. times do I have to forgive when he does the same stupid thing over and over again? How many times? Right. Seven Jesus seven. Said, you know, even seven times, Jesus? He said, no, 70 times, seven times you need to forgive. Doesn't matter right. how many times he does it wrong. Exactly. Always forgive. It's yes, very important. Perfect. 
in the gospel according to spiritism that's the, the third codification in the uh, the third book in the spiritist codification it it talks more about the teachings of jesus and it talks a lot about what forgiveness is about and forgiveness is certainly letting go it doesn't mean we forget say that somebody really hurts us how are we going to forget that it's impossible but are we going to hate them forever and ever and ever? Just let it go. Just, Just let it go. Because what I was saying before about the level of a, a spirit's level of vibration in the spirit world, if a spirit is full of anger and hatred and that person did me wrong and I'm never going to forgive them and I'm going to get even with them, if all that's going on, that keeps our vibration very dense. And so right. that keeps us. Yeah. And you have to stay there with that person? No. You just no. No. love them right. and you bless them yeah. and you move on. You don't have to stay with exactly. them. Right. As you were just saying, I think forgiveness is about letting go. That's and right. it's essential because if we hang on emotionally to something, we're we're only harming ourselves. That's right. Perfect, perfect, Peter. That's perfect. You wrote some books. So do you want to promote your books a little bit? Oh, okay. All right. Um, my wife, uh, Betty Rosen, is her pen name. And uh, we've collaborated on a few different children's books. Um, and let's see. One of them is a book she wrote primarily called A Heart Alone in the Land of Darkness. It's an allegorical story about a heart searching for an owner in a land where everyone's lost their humanity. And so the heart's trying to find someone. To That's connect. a children's book? That's a children's book, yeah. Wow. Those are older, older children, children though, right? not, not small, small children. Okay. But, you know, five and up or so. And uh, it's a it's a story about compassion and acceptance. And, uh, wow. And the heart uh, has to learn also to find the right one to connect with and not try to connect with anybody because that doesn't work that way. So that, wow. that book is about that. We have a book for smaller children. We actually have one that just came out in English. Originally we had it in um, Spanish and also in Portuguese, but we uh, it's called God to find froggy in which we were making fun of ourselves because our son, when he was very small, lost a favorite toy frog of his. And, and I remember my wife going, oh my God, we lost the frog. And we tried to find it. We went back to the restaurant and the frog was gone. And we did try to get a new one, but we couldn't. But that kind of became the impetus for doing a story in which we make fun of well-meaning parents that are a little over the top and trying to replace yeah. the sacred frog, so to speak. And it's so it's in part a story about that. And it's also a story about letting go. Um, that's mm -hmm. for, for smaller children. And then for young adults, uh, we have a book called Two Continents, Four Generations, which is a story about a um, an American Jewish boy who gets in touch with his Brazilian Jewish heritage through the story of his uh, grandfather. And it's based on my wife's family who left Poland in 1939, just literally days before Germany invaded in September 1st. Wow, that was good to and, take it out. Uh, yeah, my wife's uh, oldest aunt uh, was 16 when she left. She kept a diary, but unfortunately the diary got lost, but she remembered a lot about the trip. And so she um, was able to interview her aunt, and we took that raw information and created a historic book that's set in two time periods. One's the journey that the family, uh, the grandfather and his family takes in 1939 from Poland to Brazil, which was dangerous because the Atlantic Ocean was full of German submarines sinking ships at that time. Oh my goodness. Not safe. So they had to really go on a circuitous route all the way, stay close oh. to the borders of, of Africa all the way down and then back up oh to my goodness. Brazil. Um, so there's that journey in the book, and then the American boy who um, is doing a modern trip in the present with his family from the U.S. to Poland. And that, in part, was inspired by after we, my wife and I were interested in this book, and we started to write it, we wanted to go 
to Poland where to the town her family came from. So we learned about the effects of the Holocaust on the small town that her family came from, which was um, a town called Piatski in south uh, southeastern part of Poland near the border with Ukraine. And it was a, a, a town that was um, about 6,000, most of whom were Jewish. So the town never really recovered from from the Holocaust. Did, did we were most of happened. the Jews gone then? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a few escaped, but most were murdered at uh, the Belzic concentration camp, which was, was near the border with Ukraine. Oh, my. Wow. We met a historian of that town who told us, you know, a great deal of what happened. The other interesting thing about that trip, by the way, was the my wife was able to find her her father's birth certificate. We also found the grades that he had at the school because typically the Nazis would destroy stuff, any records they could get their hands on. But this town had some records that were still intact. And so she was able to bring back birth certificate, marriage certificate, if I remember correctly, and things like that in Polish. But uh, My goodness. That, yeah, so it was a very moving trip, kind of a depressing trip, I must admit. But uh, yes, but to save the very, records of those people, oh, absolutely so precious. It's a very worthwhile trip, and and I visited um, the camp Auschwitz on my own, and that we together went to uh, another camp called Majdanek, which was on the outskirts of, of um, Lublin. And uh, so I knew a fair amount about the Holocaust before going, but but it's an eye-opener to actually. So go. important to save that memory. Oh, yes, yes. Never yes. forget. Yeah. Absolutely. So our books are on a variety of topics. And then we have actually one book that's, that's kind of a spiritist book, if you will, it's about a spirit of a young woman, young a spirit named Annabelle, who wants to incarnate into a particular family. She's got the family that she's watching, is, but the parents haven't decided if they're going to have a second child or not. So, so she's part, prodding them, giving them the dreams like, of a baby. No, yeah, please have another one. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> yeah. yeah, well, and, yeah. send me send me your um, titles of the books so I can put them sure. in the in the okay. notes. Oh, thank you. Okay. I'm, I'm so sorry. We've, this has been so fascinating. Mm -hmm. This is this. I think you've told us more about spiritism even than ever anybody else has. It's been oh. quite fascinating. Maybe we should do this mm -hmm. again. Sure, be happy. But to. we've come to the end of our time. Okay. Well, what do you want people to take away from our conversation today? Um, I certainly hope people will support the U.S. Uh, Spiritist Symposium, if they're able to. Again, it's in Portland, Oregon. It will be. So is it going to be Portland. online too? Can, can, yes. can yeah. Okay, it so um, yeah. if there's a if there's a uh, specific, because mm -hmm. I couldn't find it. If there's a specific you, um, URL, just send me the URL. We'll put that in the okay. notes as well. All right. Um, I, I, I have the general right URL for the Spiritists, but yeah. I don't have a specific one for this. Information for the. Spiritist Symposium is on www.spiritistsymposium.org. Okay. Also, if you go to the website of the U.S. Spiritist Federation, which is www.spiritist.us. Yeah, that I have. Yeah. Yeah. And then also on YouTube, if you type in U.S. Spiritist Federation, you'll find the... Um, uh, several videos that we've done. Actually, something else I'll mention, if I may, real quick, is that the U.S. Spiritist Symposium has been inspired in part, uh, is part of, I should say, a whole program called uh, Psychology and Spirituality, which is um, happening weekly. It's a weekly podcast-like series on Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And Every week, it's a conversational podcast that focuses on some aspect of psychology from a spiritist perspective. And Great. a lot of it's influenced by the works of Joanna DeAngelis, whose works are cited in, in that series. But it started um, earlier this year, uh, February, if I remember correctly. And there's now up to, uh, gosh, 
I think we're almost at episode 30, but or close to it. And, That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people enjoy mm -hmm. do, going seeing videos of that sort of thing. So that'll be great. Yeah, it's very conversational, which is what it's intended to be. And, and uh, you know, the guests on there are people that are um, familiar with it, uh, with these books and are, it, it's kind of a free flowing conversation in a way, but it's great. rooted on in, in this work. Well, consider yourself hugged, my dear. This has been very okay. enjoyable and enlightening. Back at you. And, <laughs> and everyone, I'm so happy you were with us today. This has been really a lot of fun. And well, thank our you, guest, thank you. as 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 you know, has been Peter Hayes. Um, and he's I think this is great. We're gonna have him back again, I think, just to talk about more stuff because there's a lot we have to talk about still. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. I'm so happy you could be with us today. Please never forget, you are a powerful, eternal being. You never began, you never will end. And when you get that, it changes everything in your life for the better. Next week, our guest will be Annette Marinaccio. She will She's going to be with us for the second time because the first time was just not enough. Her handy new book is Your Soul Focus. She was with us, actually, I think at the start of the summer. And we only got through part of her book. Her, she's an accountant. Uh, she's a healthcare executive. And her mother-in-law died. And that got her very interested in this field. So out of the blue, she decided to do a lot of research. And then she wrote this book. I don't think anyone's ever done this that I've heard of, just out of the blue with such a big field. But she wrote a very good little book, just the fact, the way an accountant would do it. Just the facts, very simple. When people suddenly have lost someone, what would they need to know? And I thought her book was great. Um, I was so impressed with her that and when we basically didn't get through the book, I said, you've got to come right back. I put her in as soon as I could, and she's going to be back next week to basically give us the rest of the story. And I think you're going to really enjoy hearing from her again. So please just join us next week. I think you'll see why. This week, our guest has been Peter Hayes. Peter has, is part of a, basically a tradition. They always send us someone from the Spiritists just to talk about their next Federation gathering. And this time it's going to be this September 30th from 9.30 to 6 in Portland, Oregon. But frankly, I think Peter's a very interesting guy and I just want to talk to him again. So we'll have him back again just to talk about other stuff. He's a worker at the Spiritist Group Love and Light Network in New Jersey, and he's their current outreach director from the Spiritists, the Federation. Um, but um, frankly, there's a lot, I think, as you as you see from hearing from Peter, there's a lot that people learn when they get very involved in the spiritists. Each person we've had that they've sent to us has kind of been like him, kind of deep into what is an interesting movement, because unlike other people who get very involved in their religion, um, he's a seeker. He's been seeking and I mean here he could talk probably talk for an hour about about the Holocaust. I've I've really have never met anybody who has done a lot of interesting stuff with the Holocaust. And that I've never talked about it myself, but that's an area that I'm very interested in and I maybe we'll have him back just to talk about that. Mm -hmm. So frankly, Spiritism, the Holocaust, there are a number of of topics that I would really like to talk more about. And so we'll have him back to talk about that. But spiritism continues to grow in the U.S. in part because it's not a religion per se. It's a spiritual movement. And people are seekers now because the country is falling apart and it shouldn't be falling apart. It's falling apart because the people in it are being led astray in a lot of different ways. So let's each of us individually try to find our own path toward truth. And then maybe we can lead one another back to where we should be going and we'll lead one another back to God. And that's where, that's where I think all of us are going now. So I think spiritism is going to be one of the ways we all do that. And now, of course, it's also time to once again mention that Seek Reality Online is your one-stop resource for all things afterlife. Just go to SeekReality.com and start to learn for yourself that your own reality is eternal. Nothing 
else about it. It's just eternal. Learn the ultimate truth for yourself from our dear friend, Craig Hogan. He's your worldwide expert on all things afterlife. And teachingsbyjesus.com is your single resource for all the beautiful divine truths that are brought to us in perfect love by the beautiful, wonderful, eternal teacher of the truth. And now finally, Emperor Constantine's religion is falling apart. So the original movement of Jesus can finally begin. Teachingsbyjesus.com is the Lord's own religion-free website. It's made by Jesus in perfect love for you. Finally, my own nonfiction books are Liberating Jesus, My Thomas, The Fun of Dying, The Fun of Staying in Touch, The Fun of Growing Forever, The Fun of Living Together, and The Fun of Loving Jesus, Embracing the Christianity that Jesus Taught. For young children, there's The Fun of Meeting Jesus, which is a beautiful picture picture book. I wish I had drawn the pictures, but I'm not that good an artist. However, it's a beautiful book. I would, we actually have the pictures for another of the book, if I can only, when we find the time to write the words, we'll have another picture book for children. You can find all of these books wherever books are sold. You may have to order them, of course, but you can find them anywhere. And the adult books also are available as audio books, except for the last. I'm trying to find the time to do it as an audio book, and then we'll have that one as well. If you want to talk about any of my books, or if you want to talk about anything at all, you can always contact me through the green contact block on robertagrimes.com. I answer emails if you give me your correct email address. And all of the more than 500 past episodes of Seek Reality are available wherever audio podcasts can be found. And you can listen to new audio episodes each week with the Seek Reality app that you can find for free wherever free apps are available. You also can see the new video episodes each week on Roku or Fire Stick. Meanwhile, this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Please enjoy and make the most of this coming week in our one reality, always knowing that you out of all the people in all the world, in all the universe, in all the universes that ever, ever have existed or ever will exist, you most of all, you are perfectly loved. You've been listening to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Roberta blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Join us every week as we explore what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about the one reality we all share. Knowing the truth changes everything.